think of a time when you were sitting with your teammates or your classmates and your boss or your teacher asked you. You knew that you know the answer but still you couldn't muster the courage and the confidence to raise your hands and answer that question because you felt like you didn't have enough confidence people will laugh at you if you're correct or incorrect you're not sure of so you never take that action but then someone who's sitting next to you just raises their hand instantly raises up and starts to answer that question and in that moment your opportunity is lost because that person has gathered all the appreciation and regards from everyone and you felt like if you had more confidence a little more confidence you could have been in that person's place and you could have been gathering appreciation and regards life would have been different for you confidence is something that we all want in our everyday life we feel confident in something but we don't feel confident about a lot of other things and the more we have the more we want recently i read the book the confidence gap by ras harris and this video has been derived from the contents of that book. Hi everyone, I'm Shagun Agarwal and let's explore those five tips that you can implement in your everyday life to increase your confidence level. So let's begin with the first one. The action of confidence comes first, the feelings of confidence come later on. Let me explain you what that means. It means that the feelings of confidence will not magically appear in your life. But if you start taking action towards anything where you want to feel more confident, then the feelings would start coming up so the action comes first the feelings come later on let me give you my own example when i started my youtube channel maybe more than a year ago i was very scared to face the camera even though i had publicly spoken i had given public speeches in the united states and in india i've been an international speaker i've spoken at many many big companies like charles schwab jp morgan but then when it was about facing the camera and speaking to the camera i felt very scared but now over the lane making two almost 200 videos i feel more confident so when i took steps when i took action and i prepared more of more videos i started feeling more confident so the action came first the feelings automatically came later on if you keep waiting for the feeling of confidence to start coming up chances are you're going to be waiting forever in the words of lance armstrong who is one of the greatest athletes of all times the world has seen the world is full of people who are trying to purchase self-confidence or manufacture it or simply posture it but you can't fake confidence you have to earn it if you ask me the only way to do that is work the key is if we want to do anything with confidence you need to practice those skills not once but multiple times so if you want to become a writer you need to start writing if you want to become a speaker you need to start speaking it is said that it takes about 10,000 hours of practice to call yourself an expert in that field the second is understanding your relationship with fear see true confidence is not in the absence of fear it is in the management of fear so the next time you don't feel like doing something because you feel less confident and you have fear of doing that then don't run away from the fear and don't run away because you don't have the confidence to do it but just acknowledge your fear accept fear and do it anyways so remember this tagline the next time feel the fear and do it anyways but once you start facing your fear head on you will start seeing your confidence level go up if you have not subscribed to the channel till now and if you've liked the content till now please do consider subscribing because 98 percent of our viewers are still not subscribed to the channel it would take one second of your time but it would mean a lot to us the third and a very interesting one is embracing vulnerability see we always try to become perfect so suppose you are trying to become friends with a girl you try to show that you're a perfect person you're a perfect man with all the qualities and the abilities in this world but that is when you're not showing the human aspect of your personality you're not showing your flaws you're not showing your vulnerability you're not showing your weaknesses that means you're not showing your authentic self so you will never feel confident projecting yourself in front of that girl because you're projecting yourself someone as who you are not embracing vulnerability can actually be a catalyst for greater confidence when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable we open ourselves to deeper conversation more meaningful conversation we build a bond with that other person we don't feel the need to become perfect we're not running after perfection that means we are sharing our fears insecurities and imperfection and that will foster empathy and understanding between two people for example instead of pretending in a team meeting that you know everything admit that you are not sure of something and invite collaboration just say i'm not sure how to go about this and i would want more inputs from all of you another example would be in an interview instead of just pretending that you know all the answers it is better to 
say to the interviewer that you know the answer to this and it's also okay to admit that you don't know the answer of something just say i'm not sure about this let's move on to another question the fourth is harnessing the power of visualization i've prepared several videos on the power of visualization please do take a look it is something that anyone and everyone can incorporate in their daily life in every and any situation possible suppose if you're going for an interview imagine yourself giving a successful interview imagine yourself having the correct posture the correct body language getting good gestures from the interviewer showing the confidence of knowing all the answers even if you're not knowing all the answers that's also okay because you're showing vulnerability so in that case imagine having a clear picture imagine the room imagine the interview imagine the questions imagine how you are answering if you're going to a social setting you're going to meet 20 people and you're scared about it a day or two before start visualizing yourself talking confidently giving all the right answers showing a good stance a friendly smile these are some of the things that you can visualize and when you visualize we actually activate a part of the brain that makes us believe that we can imagine something we can actually relive also you know athletes in real life visualize for hours and hours before the d-day they visualize getting full marks they visualize winning the match by imagining future scenarios by imagining ourselves winning in those future scenarios we prepare our minds to win and that improves our confidence level by repeatedly visualizing success we rewire our brain for success says we start focusing on possibilities rather than limitations and that fuels our confidence and our determination levels. The fifth is challenging self-limiting beliefs. See, when I was starting my YouTube channel, I had a self-limiting belief that I will not be able to face the camera, that I will be judged by others and it will not be the same as giving another in-person conference. But this is something that I questioned. This is something that I understood that it has been going on for a very long time because of which this self-limiting belief has come up. So if you have self-limiting beliefs, which we all have, try to question that, try to get to the root of it and understand that everyone faces it. Our beliefs about ourselves shape our reality and influence our confidence levels. In this book, The Confidence Gap, author Russ Harris talks about the concept of thought diffusion. That means we as individuals need to distance ourselves from those negative self-limiting thoughts and beliefs that we have been conditioned to accept maybe through our parents, our society, our neighbors or whomsoever. Identify all the negative and limiting beliefs you have such as I am not good enough, I am not meant to do this, this is not where my strength lies and understand where it is coming from and then try to implant them with something positive. Feel it and do it anyways then you will realize that those were just in your mind. Those had nothing to do with your abilities. Suppose you feel that you can never become a good public speaker and start to challenge this self-belief. Try to start speaking, try to look for more opportunities. Even try to start speaking in front of friends and family then see how it goes look for experiments and seek inspiration from others who have overcome such fears and have succeeded in life by expanding your definition of creativity and challenging limiting beliefs you unlock new avenues of confidence and self-expression so maintaining confidence is difficult but it is interesting it is worth it if you start implementing these techniques one by one every single day taking small steps you will see that over a period of time your confidence level is going up. So let's recap those five techniques that I have discussed over here. The first is understanding that the action of confidence comes first and then comes the feeling of confidence. The second is understanding your relationship with fear. Confidence is not the absence of fear but the management of fear. The third is power of visualization. The more I can visualize myself becoming successful in any situation, the more confidence I gain in real life. The fourth is embracing vulnerability. The more true I am in front of others, the more I show my flaws and weaknesses the more confidence I gain because I don't have to pretend to be someone else. The fifth is understanding what your self-limiting beliefs and self-doubts are and then working around them. So if you have read this book do let me know in the comment section if you feel that you're not confident enough in any area of your life let's discuss in the comment section. Maybe I can help you out. I recently read this book and if you want to know more about confidence I would highly recommend this book. Thank you so much for watching. Do consider subscribing and thanks for your time.